career acquisition. The objective of uh, this lecture is to explain how we can acquire the career. So it's not modulation or demodulation. Our objective is to acquire the career. To do that, we have the following objectives. We'll explain the career acquisition in double sideband. And then we will go into the signal squaring method. The technique used for carrier acquisition in double sideband is signal squaring method. Uh, and the signal squaring method contains what we call the PLL, the phased locked loop. So we need to understand that. We'll also touch on the cost test loop. And then we'll discuss whether carrier acquisition can be done for single sideband or not. Just to make, to make clear, uh, we are discussing double, uh, carrier acquisition and double sideband suppressed carrier because if we have carrier, then there is, no, there is usually no need for carrier acquisition. We can use non-coherent detection. So the diagram here shows you the sequence of the lecture. We'll explain the signal squaring method. And to explain it, we, we use the PLL. And inside the PLL, there is something VCO. So the PLL is a branch or a block inside the signal squaring method, and the VCO is a block inside the PLL, which we're going to explain in a second. Before we proceed, let's explain what we are doing. Why do we need carrier acquisition? We need it for coherent detection. And the block diagram you see here is a demodulator, the double sideband suppressed carrier demodulator. You have the incoming signal, the modulated signal, to demodulate it coherently, we need to multiply by a cosine with exactly the same phase. So how do we get this carrier from the incoming signal? Now, of course, the objective of this block is to finally get the message demodulated. But now our lecture is basically here. The incoming signal will get a branch and do the carrier acquisition. The output of this lecture, the output of this process which is carrier acquisition, is to get the carrier. Uh, unlike usual cases of modulation or demodulation, we would get the message or the modulated signal here would like just to get the carrier. So let's start with the explaining the idea. What you see here is a double sideband suppressed carrier spectrum example. Somebody would say that, why don't we just use uh, a small filter here so something like this, a very narrow band filter, and we pick our carrier. Uh, it seems like a smart idea, but remember that for voice applications, usually the original spectrum is having a guard band here. So once the signal gets double side band modulated, there is almost nothing here. So if you use a filter, you get nothing. To solve this problem, we need to guarantee, we, may, we want to make sure that the signal, the original message, the one that's used for correct acquisition has uh, s some component here. So we don't have a guard band. How do we do this? By squaring, as we're going to see next. So the diagram shown here is what we call the signal squaring method. We start with the incoming signal, double sideband suppressed carrier. And then we square. Why do we square? Because squaring or multiplying a signal by itself in time results in convolution. So if you have the following spectrum from let's say minus b to b, after squaring we get the convolution and we get double the width. Okay, So this is going to be from minus 2b to 2b. In our case for, for, uh, for our case here, once we square, if this is the spectrum of the original signal, then the spectrum of the square will be wider, and we're going to have convolution overlap between the two figures, which results in covering this guard band. So again, why do we square? Because we want to guarantee that with convolution that we don't have a guard band here. We fill the band. Now, once we square, of course, this is a baseband example, but the example we are seeing here is um, uh, let's say a modulated example. So we get the same shape, 
but at higher frequency. Of course, then once we have one two guarantee, we can use a filter, okay, at the dedicated point. So let's let's explain the next block, which is the narrow band bus filter. All right, so now we have squared the signal, so m of t times cosine gets squared, okay, and then we can open this cosine into one half, one plus uh, cosine double the frequency. So the impact of squaring on the carrier on the cosine is to double the frequency. So we can split them into two terms. Okay, this is the term that you are interested in. And notice now that this term is it not at the carrier frequency, it's at double the frequency. And this is why we're going to use a narrow band, narrow band because we just want the, the carrier with a frequency centered at 2 omega. So we have doubled the frequency. Later on, we'll make up for that by using a 2 to 1 frequency divider. A 2 to 1 frequency divider will receive a cosine or a tone of the given frequency and produce a cosine with half of that frequency. So here is now the spectrum look that looks like in the spectrum of the squared signal, X. With the use of narrow band filter, I got the blue signal which is the signal at, the signal at this stage. Notice that there is some residual here from the message because once we filter, we're going to get part of the signal. How do we get rid of this? That's the job of the phased locked loop. The phased locked loop will get a certain cosine and produce a clean one. Okay, let's dedicate a slide for this. So this is going to be explained later on. But for now, we can see that we got the signal of interest at high frequency using a voltage, um, using the phase lock loop will clean the signal and we'll see how because it, it produces a new sinusoid and then finally we have the 2 to 1 frequency divider which is going to change the frequency content from 2 omega c to omega c and mission accomplished we have acquired the carrier and hence the title carrier acquisition now uh, let's see how the phase lock loop work it's called a loop logically because there is a loop here basically there is a voltage controlled oscillator what a voltage controlled oscillator does it basically produces oscillations so the voltage controlled oscillator produces oscillations what controls this oscillation these oscillations is a controlling voltage so this input is a voltage that controls the oscillation so it can shift the freak the, the frequent shift the phase right or left in our scenario we call it the voltage controlled oscillator. If the voltage here is zero, I will get oscillation at as is without a change. If we make the, the voltage positive, then things will shift right, the phase will be changed. If we lower the, the voltage into the negative part, the controlling voltage, we get uh, the phase to change in the other direction. So this is the voltage controlled oscillator. So it will start generating sinusoids that is similar to our carrier. So our carrier here is a cosine. If you want to start from sine, you know that the difference between sine and cosine is just minus pi over two. Usually we, our default is cosine, but we can make it look a sine by just uh, minus pi over two phase shift. All right, so this is just a phase shifter to change from cosine to sine. What we do, we will compare our locally generated uh, carrier with the incoming carrier. So we multiply once we multiply the two, we get the sum and the difference. The sum will be at high frequency, and the difference between the incoming signal, the noisy one, and the locally generated one is uh, here. To pick only the difference, I'm going to use a narrow low, band fil low bus filter because this is at high frequency. So this term is going to drop. And the controlling voltage now is AB over 2 times sine the difference. If the difference is zero we say that the two signals are locked and the controlling voltage will be zero the oscillation will continue to be produced which is exactly the same as the original or incoming signal okay now note that y of t is controlling the voltage and the output is at z of t here are some terminologies i would like to share about the the characteristics of pll because usually we hear about the capture range the lock range okay 
and we also understand that we have this noising, a noise filtering effect because we are producing a new uh, sinusoid from the voltage controlled oscillator. Now, if you look at this diagram, uh, to start the capturing process, we need to be within a certain range of the incoming signal. So the phased look loop will not start unless we are in a certain range close to the incoming signal. But once we get locked, once the loop, the incoming signal and the locally generated signal, they are locked, they will continue to be locked, even if they go beyond that range. So usually the lock range is greater than the capture range. Once more, what's the, what's the capture range? This is a required range to start the process. So we have to be within a close vicinity of the incoming signal. But once we get locked, even if the incoming phase changes, we can tolerate more. Of course, if it goes too much different, we will lose the lock. If you want to read more about the phase lock loop, there are lots of resources. I just want to give a quick idea about what the phase lock loop is. It's just a block inside the signal squaring method. We use it to clean the noise of uh, the residual of the message. Now, we can think also in a different way. We can look at Costas loop. Basically, Costas loop is very similar to PLL. But in one branch, we are comparing with cosine. In the lower branch, we are comparing with sine. So here, somehow similar to the PLL, but we are comparing with cosine in one branch and comparing with sine in the lower branch. What's the advantage? Let's trace the math. So this is the incoming signal. It's a sinusoidal cosine. Our job is to get the cosine. Remember, we are not modulating or demodulating. We are doing carrier acquisition. So uh, we will multiply by a signal. This signal has a different phase. And of course, we will multiply by the sine. So we have the upper branch, the lower branch here. Cosine times cosine, sine times cosine, we use trigonometry. To get the difference and drop the sum, we're going to use low bass filters like here and here. So these terms are going to cancel. We get y1 and y2. In the next slide, we're also going to convert y1 and y2 by multiplying them and taking the difference. And we'll see what happened. So we are here at uh, y1 and y2. These are our uh, expressions. Next, we're going to multiply the two expressions. This is the multiplication. And when we multiply sine by cosine, we get um, the sum and the difference. Okay, the, 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 we get the term, which is now the difference. Uh, we can also use a, a low bass filter here for, for cleaning the signal. And now the controlling voltage, just in case there is anything here, uh, the controlling voltage you see is D over eight, if you want to call the constant D, just a constant. Uh, this is the controlling voltage, the one that controls the VCO. If you compare this with the previous slide, the VCO, you'll find that the controlling voltage here is more sensitive because there is a factor of two here. In both cases, we are generating oscillations using VCO. But in, with cost loop, because we compare with two different signals, we have a faster conversion, if you like, or it will lock in a faster way compared with PLL because we have a factor of two when we uh, change the voltage of uh, the VCO, the controlling voltage. Now let's get back to our... Now back again, the, the, the PLL that we have just explained is basically a block here. As you can see, it is just a, a block here in the signal squaring method. You can use PLL, you can use Costas loop, and remember that the VCO that we explained is just a block inside uh, the PLL. All what we have explained with the PLL or, or Costas loop, it's used here in the signal squaring method. So the question now, can we use, can we use the signal squaring method to acquire the carrier in single sideband. So you start, for example, with M of T, cosine omega CT, minus or plus MH of T times sine omega CT, right? Something like this. So you, you, you want to show that the signal squared method does not work. So you start with the expression, you do the squaring, you go over the, all the blocks, 
and then finally prove that you do not get what you want what you want is cosine omega ct with the proper angle uh, so if you don't get it then it is not working so please do this proof as an exercise and please comment uh, down about what you got so just to conclude what are we going to do then next one if if signal squaring method does not work for single sideband how do we acquire the carrier or how do we demodulate currently one option is to use um, to send a pilot what's a pilot we send we add a small carrier the carrier will not allow for envelope detection it's not a full carrier it's just a small one and the, the objective is just to extract this carrier at the receiver and use it for demodulation of course there will be a minor impact on the efficiency because of the small amplitude of the carrier and this is usually augmented with high quality crystal oscillators electronic circuits to guarantee that we are we don't lose the phase okay that's it for um, career acquisition